Hello, my name's David, and in this video, we're going to create an out of the frame, out of bounds, pop up, pop out, whatever you want to call it, style image. And talking of image, I will put a link to this picture in the description below. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to select our skateboarder. So it's over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the selection brush tool. Looking at the menu bar, I've got the add to selection. The width of the brush is 22 pixels. Snap to edges is ticked. I'm now going to use spacebar, so press and hold down the spacebar. Now press and hold down command or control to zoom in. Selecting the top of his shoe. Let's just quickly come up here, making sure we get all the little bits and pieces. Round his shorts down here, top of the shoe. Yeah, I'm going to leave that, uh, correct that in just a moment. Just come in over the shorts there, making sure we get any stray little bits and pieces. Using the spacebar just to move, coming up over, because there's a few different colours, well, all right, a couple of different colours in his t-shirt, making sure we get all the little sparkly bits. There was one out onto his arm, making sure we go right to the edge, top of his crash hat, down the other side. That was quick and easy, but you can see it's just out a little bit on the arm. Right, let's leave it like that. Let's come up to the menu bar. We're going to go to refine. Now when this opens, uh, let's see what we've got. Preview on overlay matte edges. All of these are set to the defaults. I am going to take the smooth up to, let's go to round about the three pixels. I have noticed get quite a jaggedy edge, particularly on this arm for some reason. That's when it stays in the selection. So just quickly going over that. I'm not going to do the whole image. You can see it's not in the selection again. So let's go over it one more time. And that looks a bit better. Coming up to the strap here on his crash hat. As I said, I'm not going to do the whole image because I'm sure you know how to do this. Just moving it around. Boy, he looks petrified, doesn't he? He's probably thinking, now what? Okay, let's come down and have a look at the output. For this, we're going to use selection and we're going to click on apply. There is our selection. Just looking at it. Yeah, it's done a pretty good job. So I'm going to leave it like that. Just going up over his watch, the rest of it. Great stuff. That'll do nicely. Command zero, control zero. Let's go to fit on screen. The next thing we need to do is to duplicate this selection twice. Make sure the background layer is live. Now we can use Command J, Control J once and using Command J, Control J again. Switching off the top layer, we're going to come to this layer. We're going to click on the word background and I'm going to call it what it's about to become, which is a shadow. Let's come up to our color panel. Make sure you've got the default colors, any other color. Press D on the keyboard. Now heading over to Edit, we're going to go down to Fill with Secondary Color. Secondary color is black. We can now remove the selection. I'm going to use Command D, Control D. I'm also going to press H on the keyboard to give me the hand tool. Next, let's switch on the top layer. We're going to come down to the icon here for live filters. We're going to head up to Gaussian Blur and let's just lift this up. We're going to blur it by, as I bring it, you can see the drop shadow emerging from behind our skateboarder. Let's take it to 21 pixels. That looks pretty good. Don't forget, it is a live filter. We can come back. We can adjust it. Okay, we're going to switch these off. We're now going to come down to the background, and this is where we're going to create our frame. Now, to help us, we're going to head up to View. We're going to go down to Show Grid. No, I'm not. I'm going to go down to Grid and Axis Manager, just so I can show you how I've set this up. Now, you can switch the grid on. Show grid, put a tick in the box. Now I've set it up with the grid lines in blue and I've got the subdivisions in red, but choose colors which make it stand out from the background. You can change the color, click in the window. I'm using the color wheel and I've selected blue. You can also change the opacity by just moving the slider up and down. Once again, just choose an opacity to make it stand out from the background. Once you're happy, click close over to the toolbox. The more key tools down the bottom, there it is there, the freehand selection tool. We're going to be using polygonal. I've got new, feather, make sure this is set to zero. 
I want to make sure I get these two guys in, so I'm going to come to this point. Let's click down. I'm going to go across here. Let's click down. Just want to make sure I get a few of these guys in, so coming down to this point, click in there. There's our start position. So I'm going to come out one. Let's come out two. Once again, just clicking down on that line. Now coming up to our start position, clicking down. There is our selection. You can now go to view. We can come down to show grid. Click on this. It has disappeared. We're now going to use command J, control J once and command J, control J again. Clicking on the background layer. Clicking on the word background, calling it shadow. Right, coming up to edit, we're going to go down to fill it with secondary color. That has filled it with black. We can't see it because I left the top layer switched on. Command D, control D. We have now removed the selection. That is important. Okay, make sure the shadow layer is highlighted down to live filter. We're going to go to Gaussian blur as we did before. This has got to be my favorite way of producing a drop shadow. We can now take this up around about the same. Let's go to 21 pixels, accept that. Again, it's a live filter. We can adjust it. Now you can see it coming out around the entire image. Let's go to the top layer. We're now going to go down to FX, which is layer effects. We're going to put a white line right the way around the outside. So let's go to outline, put a tick in the box, click on it. So it's highlighted color. No, we're not going to use black. We're going to change. I'm using the color wheel, but whatever method you use, select white alignment outside, changing it to inside, taking the line up. Let's go up to that sort of, let's go to. 15 there looks pretty good once again click to accept it don't forget yes you can come back in you can adjust this as well right let's click on this shadow v on the keyboard is going to give us the move tool and we can now move the shadow around into any area we like now i'm going to pull it down to the from the bottom because looking at the shadows in the image you can see it looks as if it's almost directly underneath him so let's pull it down like this looking at the top it's just a, a little bit too much. Now, if you press and hold down the Alt or the Option key, you get far greater control. So you can just drop it down behind. I just want a hint of it. And let's pull it in a touch. Now let's pull it out on the side, still holding down the Alt or the Option key. Okay, to finish it off, let's come up to the Opacity slider. We're going to reduce the opacity to blend it in. Round about that position looks good. Okay, let's turn our skater, his shadow on. Let's, there it is. Right, got the move tool around it. I'm now gonna use the arrow keys on the keyboard. The right arrow is going to nudge it out. Still holding down that right arrow, let's take it out here. I'm now gonna use the downward arrow. Let's drop it down there, looks good. And once again, we can come up to the opacity slider. We can blend it in, just reducing down the opacity. Great stuff starting to look good click in to remove the slider i'm also going to press h on the keyboard to give me the hand tool let's come down to our background we're now going to go down to adjustments and we're going to head up to recolor no i'm not going to use sunset red instead let's change it to blue taking the saturation down like this I really like this method because you can come to the lightness slider, you can have black, you can take it in the opposite direction, you can have white. You can see the way the drop shadows work in, that looks pretty good. Let's just pull it back into this sort of area, just giving it a little bit more blue. I'm going to head back down to our background layer, down to our live filters. We're going to go to Gaussian blur, I'm just going to give it a little bit of blur perhaps around about uh, seven or eight, I think will be right. Yeah, that looks really good in the background. Okay, next, top layer of the layer stack, click on it, highlighted, coming down to the shadow. This is the shadow of our frame. Press and hold down, shift on the keyboard, clicking down, they are all highlighted. I'm going to use Command G, Control G. We're gonna group them together. I'm now going to press V on the keyboard because we're going to give it a little bit of a twist. That's put the move tool around our group. 
We can now come to the top button here, this white button, and I'm going to rotate it round like this. Let's lift it up so he covers his, or well, the original skateboarder. That could be pretty good. See if I can just push it a touch more. Round we go, just lifting it up and over, over to his hand. That will do nicely. H on the keyboard gives you the hand tool. There is our skateboarder. Everything with this is going to be completely adjustable, folding this up out of the way. And there it is. Go on, give it a try. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. If you click that little bell icon, you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.